Earth, the year 2021 CE. A new craft is about to be unveiled. Hello, I'm Todd, and this is Astron X. Thank you all for coming. Today, we're going to be introducing a novel aerospace craft with a radically different propulsion system, the Electron Flow Engine, or EFE if you prefer. This craft, which is called the EFE Touring Craft, or EFE TC, is wingless, highly maneuverable, and best part of all, it can hover near silent for days on end. But that's only half the story. Today, we're going to be testing its single stage to orbit capability. Any questions? How does this electron flow engine work? Great question. All over the surface of the craft are located microwave beam transmitters used for ionizing the surrounding air. This video was brought to you in part by our awesome patrons. Thank you. Sooner or later, such scenarios will indeed become a reality. In 2017, we stated in our first video, the Alcabier White Warp Drive, routine flights to and from space will become commonplace. We all know sooner or later routine flights to and from space will become commonplace. In fact, one day, some of you watching this video right now, within the next 10 years, may actually be going to work in space. Well, guess what? It is now beginning to come true. A step by step, SpaceX, and to a lesser degree, others, are making the dream of commercial space travel become a reality. As commercial space travel becomes increasingly commonplace, it's only a matter of time when individuals, such as yourselves, will be needed to work in space or on another planet, such as Mars. Elon Musk is doing his part in delivering us into space and to Mars. But that's only half the story. You see, over the years he has repeatedly expressed the desire for others to participate by picking up where he leaves off. Therefore, we, Astron X, are striving, putting together a team to fill in the resource, equipment, personnel, and technological gap between us, Mars, and space. Technologies such as the one we're about to discuss falls within those gaps. This time around, space travel is completely revolutionizing the world in ways that, frankly, seem more like science fiction than reality. And yet, it is reality. It's our new future. There's nothing new about this technology. What is new, however, is in the way we plan to employ it. This tech literally holds the promise of making such a craft, as we have presented, become a reality, and in fact, with testing, could even enable a single stage to orbit, SSTO, space plane, perhaps sooner and much less expensive 
than anyone expects. What is this technology, you ask? It is based on magnetohydrodynamics, or MHD for short. Magnetohydrodynamics deals with the magnetic properties and behavior of electrically conductive fluids such as plasma, liquid metals, salt water, electrolytes, and of course, ionized air. Speaking of plasma, if you haven't already, see our video Shields Up! Real Life Energy Shields in which we discuss the use of plasma for active shielding. Since the 1960s, a few countries have been slowly advancing the technology. And in 1962, Dr. Richard Rosa was the first to successfully design and build a functioning MHD generator. A few years later, based on his practical knowledge and prior successes, also designed an MHD lift fan craft which made use of MHD instead of a propeller. His plan was to design and build a vertical takeoff and landing VTOL saucer, capable of extreme maneuverabilities and high-speed horizontal flight. Obviously, this too was a wingless craft. Unfortunately, though he made great strides, the science and engineering of the times was not up to the task so the idea fell into obscurity. There are different forms of MHD. Perhaps you've heard of the MHD Drive, which was popularized by the movie The Hunt for Red October, based on Tom Clancy's best-selling novel. In the movie, not in the book, the Russian sub was said to operate by means of a mysterious drive, which of course turned out to be an MHD drive. MHD is extremely versatile, requiring no moving parts, and yet it can generate electrical power directly from kinetic energy, motion, and then directly back into motion, increasing kinetic energy. One such project took place in 1992. Mitsubishi built their own full-scale experimental MHD-propelled boat called Yamato-1, which performed extremely well despite the limitations of its design, which capped its speed at only 15 kilometers an hour, or a meager eight knots. And nonetheless, the concept had now been proven valid. But MHD for boats is a great idea. So how does one go about translating magnetohydrodynamically propelled boat into a flying machine that flies through a thin non-conductive medium, air? And since the atmosphere is also a fluid, albeit a thousand times less dense than water, with a certain degree of ionization and some reconfiguration of the MHD, the basic principle and function still applies. Ionizing the air allows for it to readily conduct electrical energy. Adding electrons and perhaps certain electron-rich gases or other vaporized elements further improves the air's conductivity. I'm sure you'd like to know how it all works, so let's not take up any more time. All over the surface of the craft are located microwave beam transmitters, MT1, used for ionizing the surrounding air. Also on the surface and surrounding the entire craft is an array of liquid nitrogen-cooled cryogenic superconducting wires, SW1, which generates a magnetic field B. Adjacent and parallel to those superconducting wires are a series of linear electrodes, EL1, which generates a current I within the now ionized air. When a current is applied to the two parallel conductors, SW1 and EL1, whose polarities are alternately flipped, the magnetic field of SW1 and the electric current induced by EL1 cross at right angles with respect to one another which generates a force known as the Laplace force, F. 
It is the Laplace force that is responsible for increasing or decreasing the kinetic energy of a conductive medium. Basically, by manipulating the current throughout various segments of the conductors, the air is accelerated and decelerated, which translates into the craft also being accelerated and decelerated, moved up or down and side to side rapidly without a single moving part. Typically, for MHD, form follows function. That is to say, the smoother the shape, the better. The saucer, for example, when current is applied, the ionized air is immediately drawn down toward the top of the craft, where it is then firmly held and guided along both its top and sides, before finally reaching the craft's nadir and detaching, where a greater atmospheric pressure is induced, pressing upward on the craft, as you can see in the animation, used for hovering and or ascending. There's one note of importance here. Unlike the various versions of the warp drive, the MHD propulsion does not negate mass. Therefore, the human squishy bits must still comply to all g-forces when maneuvering at high speeds. You can liken this propulsion to an electromagnetic Kawanda effect craft or even to an electromagnetic helicopter. All three fly in a similar fashion. For much more detailed information about the MHD by Jean-Pierre Petit, see the links in the video description below. I would suggest visiting and also subscribing to his channel here on YouTube. Let him know we sent you. Now let's discuss how the MHD is already being used. Both the US and Russia have been pouring much time and money into developing this tech. Not so long ago, the former Soviet Union started developing an advanced hypersonic scramjet, single-stage to orbit reusable space plane called the IAX, which incorporated the latest MHD and other technologies. The technologies incorporated in this design concept includes 1. An MHD generator for extracting power from the air prior to entering the engine. two a neutral particle beam to increase conductivity of the air prior to entering the engine, ionizing the flow, 3. An MHD accelerator in series with MHD generator used to direct cold air in and around the engine before dumping it directly into the hot exhaust. The accelerator and generator accelerates and decelerates the air respectively. 4. At the nose of the space plane, a cold plasma beam was employed, which acts as a kind of a air shield, creating a pocket of lower air resistance, allowing for an up to 30% increase in speed. 5. Electromagnetic fields microwaves were used for modifying the air around the craft, further reducing air resistance. The entire system combined allows the space plane to achieve near orbit, and as you can see, this design was and still is rather advanced. If that's what they had back in the 1990s, uh, what might they have today? Hmm. And that was just one example. There's more. Even NASA got in on the act, having tested their own MHD-assisted propulsion. Uh, one thing is for sure, the effectiveness and usefulness of MHD has been proven time and time again. Expanding on this, one day, perhaps sooner than you know, we might just start seeing interesting craft flying in our skies. That is, single-staged orbit aerospace craft capable of transporting folks to and from space docks, space stations, transport pods, interstellar craft, and who knows what else. Now, as you can see, we're mostly about cutting and bleeding edge technologies. And if you thought what we have presented thus far is interesting, just wait till you see what's in our pipeline. 
So, great. Thanks for coming. As usual, give us your thoughts and inputs in the comment section, or head over to Twitter and let us know there, or both. When you subscribe, be sure to click on the bell for updates. For the time being, Patreon is the best option for supporting us in the creation of videos and furthering our research. Also, be sure to check our community tab here on YouTube to stay up to date. If you want to contact us, do so via our About page or our website, but give us a couple of days to get back to you. We want to give a big shout out to all our awesome patrons, especially Walter Matera for being a super light interstellar patron. Thank you for your support. I want to thank everyone for watching. You know what I'm going to say. Until next time, keep wandering about space.